What's happening financial coaches? I thought I would just do a quick shoot from the hip discussion here. So I got a bunch of questions over the past few weeks and been writing them down and thought I would address them. First of all, one of the most common questions that I see out there are, is about certifications. So people will ask, what certification do I need? Here's a few that I've looked at. You know, what are the best ones? What are the easiest ones to get? And there's two things that I really wanna talk about with certifications. Um, there's actually probably three, but uh, the second one will kind of encapsulate it. First of all, you don't need a certification to do financial coaching. And um, like I said, I'm gonna pair my, my two thoughts on this here, but you don't need one because coaching itself is really about figuring out what a person's values are, what their priorities are, what's impeding them from doing that, helping them to uncover that. It's more about realizing uh, and discovering those types of questions and needs within themselves and pulling that out. To do that, you can certainly learn those, but a certification does not necessarily mean that you will be better at that. There are very few financial coaching certifications out there anyway. Most of them are in financial counseling, and again, I'll talk about it in a minute. But uh, for financial coaching, a lot of the financial coaching experience is based on other coaching um, experiences like life coaching and health coaching and some of those types of things. So it's so they're kind of a crossover, but then you have to really take that information and apply it in the financial coaching world, which is a little bit different and, and tends to be a little bit more like financial education and financial therapy and financial counseling. And even in some instances, it feels a little bit like financial advising, although you won't get into anything that is uh, regulated or requires licensure. So you don't need it. And in fact, when I look back at my coaching history over the past few years here, uh, you know, on my team, we have a number of financial coaches. So we had over a thousand coaching sessions done. But in my case, I had of the 388 coaching sessions that I had, I looked up that number because I needed to tell you the reality of it. I only had one session and I know that because I remember it. And the question wasn't about certifications, it was, why should I listen to you, right? So in this case, it was actually, it wasn't a required session, but um, uh, someone else, a, 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 I can't remember if it was a company or a charity or a foundation was paying for the session. And so this person ne wasn't necessarily going out and finding someone themselves. They, we were kind of provided, and so I was provided to them. And their question was, when we got on the phone is, you know, what's your background and, and uh, you know, what, what qualifies you to be a financial coach? And so I went into it, right? And, you know, one of the things that I recall not doing is telling them about my certifications, which I have the Certified Personal Financial Counselor Certification, uh, the Accredited Financial Counselor Certification, Certified Fund Specialist. So I have a number of those, but I think that alphabet soup is kind of irrelevant. And I came from the world of personal finance in financial planning, and a lot of people have FIC or Charter Financial Consultant or CFP or CFA or whatever it is. And a lot of people really don't care about that. They really care more about how am I gonna interact with you? I wanna make sure that you're competent in the things that I need. And so uh, it's more about giving them a level of comfort that they will want to work with you, not so much reading off your alphabet soup. But a lot of people put those things on their business card or on their marketing materials. And so that does maybe generate some comfort, but it's not a, a big comfort, let me say. The, the reason I bring that up is because once I started getting into it, it was very quick that I was qualified to talk about it. And they, and I don't know that I would have had to get to the certifications, but we didn't even get that far. I, I kind of spoke about my degree in economics and how I went into banking and personal finance and did investment management. And that, that was fine. You know, that was a great, you know, here's my question. That's literally how it was. It was probably a 10 second um, back and forth about that really more about establishing credibility, not certifications. And that's really the key here is that people, if they're gonna work with you, wanna feel confident in your abilities to coach them through what they have, uh, what they need or what they have going on. So in many cases, and we'll talk about this in another video, but you don't need to be an expert in everything. You don't need to be a generalist on a lot of things. You know, if they're dealing with budget problems or if they're dealing with unemployment, they wanna know what do you know about that? Because I don't need to know about life insurance or disability insurance when I'm trying to fill my income gap right now. So you don't need it. Now, of those 388 calls um, that I had, you know, one did ask about it. And if you don't have a rich background in personal finance, the certification might be something that you can uh, help hang your hat on in that case. So you don't need it. It has very rarely come up. In fact, one of the things that I thought when I started was that people were going to obsess about the certification. So I raced out and got an easy certification at that time and it never came up. 
And when uh, we hired on other coaches, uh, we always made them go through a certification process as part of just the onboarding. But in in no case was I ever told, hey, that was really helpful this time. It came up in a call, conversation or a call, and they asked about it. So um, you don't need it. You don't need it. Let me say this, part two, you should get one. <laughs> so I know this is going to sound a little bit like a hypocrisy here, but there are so many certifications out there. There are really easy ones to get and some more difficult ones to get, but you need to get it. And if you are going to work for me or with me, I would need you to have a certification. Now, as a client working with you, I don't think they care or need it. But what I need is a signal that you know something about personal finance. I, I would say that one of my biggest struggles in this business right now is that people see it like, life coaching or health coaching or whatever it might be or executive coaching or whatever and in many ways you can go and read that information you don't need to be an expert in anything because all of that information is going to be internal to that person right so uh, if i'm working with you on your career and i ask you uh you know what career do you want what do you want to be doing where do you see yourself in five years you know what what do you think your strengths are where where do you excel where do you get reward from people or acknowledgement on the things that you do None of that is going to be information I'm going to have. And so all of that information is going to come from you. I'm going to extract that from you. And we're going to be basing all of our assumptions and all of our strategies and tactics on that information. And so that information needs to be perfect and it needs to come from you. I can't, I can't bring that to the conversation. The difference in financial coaching is you have to bring a lot to the conversation. Now, in some conversations, it might not be bringing very much. In other conversations, it may be all about you bringing education. And that's where I said that financial coaching can be a blend of things. But the problem here is that if someone says, you know, one of the things that I do is uh, I invest in everything that did really well last year. And I take all the money out of stuff that did poorly last year and I put it in the stuff that did well last year. And that's a great investment strategy that's worked well for me. Well, you may have learned in some investment uh, studies that that is probably not a good strategy. It's chasing returns. And so you can't speak to that if you don't know that, right? And that's not necessarily an example that'll come up a lot, but it could be something as simple as budgeting, right? Um, I have uh, a high interest rate credit card that I try to avoid because I always put on a low interest rate. Well, maybe that low interest rate credit card charges you a fee and that fee ends up being higher, right? This is the, the typical... Uh, credit card versus payday loan thing, right? Payday loans don't charge you necessarily interest. They charge you really high fees. And so those fees, when you compare them apples to apples, can be much higher interest rates, sometimes a thousand percent interest rate. So you have to know these things in order to bring that value to the conversation and help people make good inf have good information to make good decisions. And so you do need to have a pretty broad base of knowledge when it comes to personal finance. Now you can specialize, and I'll talk about that in another video, but that means that if you don't have that, if you don't have a, a rich background in history and personal finance or investments or banking or whatever it might be, or even as a mortgage broker, there's a lot of um, roles and, and responsibilities and jobs out there that would expose you to a lot of personal finance concepts here, which I think are also good proxies. But if you don't have that, you really need to go out and get a certification. Now, as I mentioned, there are some easy ones and some, some really simple ones. I would start with some really simple ones. I would find a a, a one that you think is really easy, you know, this is not necessarily to put the alphabet suit behind your name, but it's more about saying, hey, if this is a really simple one, it's really basic, it's about budgeting, it's about life skills, it's about how insurance works, whatever it might be, some really basic core things, and you can't pass it, you probably uh, don't have a large enough repertoire to go out into those conversations and provide a lot of value yet. In some cases you might, but what I wanna know is that if the conversation gets to, why do people uh, why do people need life insurance? Or the question is, why do we budget? Or you know, uh, how do you save for retirement? Or how does that income? Or how does my savings become income in retirement? Some of these really simple core foundational questions in personal finance. If you don't have the answers for that, and not necessarily really deep answers at that point, but if you don't even understand the concepts yet, you really need to get out there and get a certification and get a base level of information and knowledge under your belt. And so there are a number of them. I'm not gonna go into a bunch of here, but uh, the certified personal finance counselor one is, is a fairly easy one to get. Um, there are some others, like I said, that are pretty easy to take. The University of Wisconsin Madison Extension, I think is the uh, the name has like a two day uh, financial coaching 
in-person course and i think it's pretty cheap like 250 or 300 dollars again it's more about triage and kind of getting you those basics but if you um, can't do those don't worry about getting the uh, expensive the really hard to get ones yet but if you can't do those i think you really need to reevaluate and say hey is this something that's right for me so you don't need a certification most people won't care about it so don't obsess about it don't think that's going to hold you up or is holding you up on the sales because that's not really the problem if you are out there and you don't have a certification and you're not getting sales and you're not getting clients the problem is not the certification you're not going to add a certification to your name or your business card and all of a sudden the floodgates are going to open you're going to get a lot of business the problem there is either you getting out and marketing yourself getting yourself known or building credibility with those people and those prospects to say, hey, yes, this is a person that knows what they're talking about and I wanna work with them. So that's really the problem. It's not the certification itself. Now, that being said, I really wanna see people get the certification, some sort of certification. You might actually find that you really like honing in on one particular topic and want to become better at that. And that's great. You know, maybe you want to be a retirement specialist. Maybe you want to be a first time home buying specialist. Maybe you want to be a, a first time family specialist, right? New families, getting married, having kids, those types of things, whatever it might be, right? You can really dive deep into those and say, Hey, this is my core niche in the personal finance space and in financial coaching, but you don't need the certification, but you should get one. So hopefully that helps a little bit when you are asking the question, which certification should I get? Because I think a lot of people are are not asking really which certification should I get because I want something easy and um, you know that helps me uh, they're thinking about is this going to help blossom my sales is this going to turn around my business is this going to open the floodgates is this going to make sure that I'm really busy with with clients and that's not the case so uh, hopefully that helps certifications let me know if you find any good ones see you later